The idea of the unscented Kalman filter was uh, developed by Simon Jolier at 2004. And he said that if we have a nonlinear function, it's easier to approximate its distribution using some predefined deterministic predefined point rather than approximating the, the linear version of that nonlinear function. In, the, the, to, to write it down, for example, assume you have a nonlinear transition function, for example, something like this is f of xn excitation plus some uncertainty. You have your measurement function as a function of your excitation plus some uncertainty. You cannot write this nonlinear function uh, in a matrix form, or it's not easy to calculate its derivative. Then we need something else to implement the Kalman filter. Uh, Julian said that if you have, for example, a state vector uh, x with size of L, we can define Two L plus one auxiliary point, which we call them sigma points, and propagate these sigma points into the transition and measurement function to to calculate the mean and and variance of the predicted states and predicted output. But what are these sigma points? If I if I call them S, okay. Assume, for example, you are at the beginning of the Kalman filter process and n is equal to zero, and we have x zero and p zero as a true state for our prior knowledge. The sigma points zero is x zero, and sigma point one to n is equal to x zero plus square root of the l plus lambda. Uh, I call this one ci. Pi i equal to 1 to n and spi equal to x0 minus l plus lambda pi and i is equal to n uh, up to 2n plus 1. And we have some weights corresponding to each of sigma points, which we call them, for example, w0 is lambda. L plus lambda, W M I here is equal to lambda divided by two L plus lambda, and here W I M is equal to lambda divided by two L plus lambda. And I used M here. Uh, I will explain you later. And we have uh, the, in, for a special case, we have a W. -C W, which is equal to W I C, equal to W I C, and W is is equal to or W zero is the same for M and C. Okay, I will come back to this weight later. But the, the thing is, you generate two L plus one predefined point uh, for example, in each iteration. Okay, and and propagate these sigma points into the transition and measurement function to predict the mean and covariance or variance of the predicted states or predicted output. Then right now, I'm going to flash back to the main definition of the Kalman filter algorithm I had for you. Then what we did, we calculated the mean and variance of the states vector, measure, predicted measurement, and use it to calculate Kalman gain. Then right now, we, have, we will do the same thing. Then if I come back here, for example, if I write it down here for you, now, instead of having one x and m, to propagate, uh, the, to propagate uh, the x and p into the transition function, we have two l plus one point to propagate into the transition and measurement function. Then it will be something like this four i equal to one uh, up to two l plus one. Okay, I, I, just one thing I forget to my, I forgot to mention is this lambda, and this lambda. We define it as a scaling factor, which I come back later and show you how it affects the, these sigma points. 
Then for i equal to 1 to 2l plus 1, we propagate each, for example, I call it x hat, I don't know, i equal to f of spi. And following that, y hat i is equal to h of the x hat i. Okay, then here we will have two L plus one X I and Y I. What we do after calculating these, we calculate the mean of this X I, which I call it mean of the X I, which is the summation of I equal to one to two N plus one W I M, which I wrote it here x i and we do the same thing for okay then what i did here for 2 n 2 l plus 1 times i calculated let me let's do this to, for, for 2L plus 1 times, I, cal I, I propagate the sigma points into the transition function and use the predicted state to, predict the, the, to, to, to calculate the predicted output for each sigma point. And after that, I calculated the mean of the predicted output, predicted state, and predicted output. Then this is the mean, mean of the states and the mean of the output, of course, predicted one. Then right now we need to calculate the, the, the covariance of the states and predicted output. To calculate the, the, for example, I call it P hat XX. In this case, it will be equal to summation of I equal to one to two L plus one WIC. This x hat i minus the mean we calculated here. Transpose. And we do the same thing for p y y. y hat i minus the calculated mean of the predicted output that's suppose you see what i did so far i have two l plus one sigma points i propagate each of the sigma points in the transition function predict the states for the next time step use the predicted state to calculate the predicted output Calculate the mean of the 2L plus 1 predicted state and predicted output, and calculate the covariance of the PXX and PYY. Okay, right now what I have, I have the mean and covariance matrix of the predicted states and predicted output. This was a step one. This was a step two. Calculating the mean, I mean, for the state and, and output. This was the covariance of the states and the output. Now we have to do one thing more. We need to calculate the, cover, the, the cross covariance. I mean, p hat x, y, which is equal to summation of i equal to 1 to l plus 1 uh, x, i hat minus the mean of the x hat hat and uh, Y I hat minus the mean of the Y I hat transpose. Once we want to calculate the the Kalman gain, it will be equal to P hat X Y, which is the cross covariance, and it this will be P hat Y Y plus R. This R is the measurement or as we defined before. 
uh, I mean Wn has a normal distribution with mean of zero and covariance of four, if you remember. Then using this Kalman gain, which will be updated in each iteration, we can, ca we can find the true state. Xn plus one will be this mean at the step n, for example, yes, plus Kalman gain, which we calculated, I call, put n to, to emphasize that it will be updated in each iteration, y n plus 1, which is the sensor data, minus this mean we calculated here for the sigma point. And what I did, I repeat again, the mean of the predicted state it's covariance. The mean of the predicted output, it's covariance. Kalman gain, the mean of the true state or updated state. And it's, it's right now we need this covariance. And this covariance will be P at time M plus one, which is equal to P of the predicted states plus Q, incorporating the modeling error, Vn, as a normal distribution with mean of zero and covariance of the cubes. Oh, you don't see it. Then, yes, then minus k, which is the common gain, pyy, we have it here, pyy hat plus r, and common gain transpose. Then this was a step three. This was a step four, a step five, and these two are steps six. Okay, you see the ensemble Kalman filter follows the same procedure as linear Kalman filter, but instead of working with one set out the data point, which was the prior knowledge or the updated state and its, its covariance at the end of the iteration. We use the prior knowledge, generate 2n plus 2l plus 1, set up the data points, sigma points. We propagate each of the sigma points into the transition and measurement function to approximate the distribution of the predicted state and output. It increases the computational time and computational cost because instead of applying one time, you need to apply two L plus one times. But you don't need to go and calculate the derivative, which is sometimes impossible or very hard. You, need, you don't need to linearize the equation. And uh, it, it, it's easy to implement. That's the, the, the most important thing. For any type of nonlinear functions, you can just generate the points in each iteration and propagate it in the, in the highly nonlinear system, which I show you later. And that's easy to implement. That's the main advantage. And uh, in, in a couple of slides, I will show you how powerful it is. Now, I, I, I told you that this lambda is the scaling factor. Then, similar to unscented Kalman filter, we have another filter which we call it Kubacher Kalman filter. It's almost followed the same procedure as unscented Kalman filter, but it uses another type of uh, techniques to calculate this predefined point, and they call it Kubacher point, for example. I don't want to go into it, but here we have two n plus one points. In the Kubacher uh, Kalman filter, we have two n points. For example, I, I'm showing you here, for example, you see the purple uh, color is showing the Yuka F point, which includes the mean, the, the center point, which is the mean of the previous um, time step or the prior knowledge. But for the Kubacher, we don't take into account the mean point. We just look at the points around. And it has, then what it means is that we have a less point, and uh, the computational cost is a bit less than the answer to the Kalman filter if you use Kovacher Kalman filter. And one thing I want to I wanna mention here is the lambda, which I explained, and it was a scaling factor. These scaling factors uh, determines how much, how much the point spread around the, the, the mean point you have in the center. Then if the lambda is big value, the number, the, 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 the auxiliary points around the, the, the center point will be spread wider or less. But if you use Kovacher Kalman filter, there is no scaling factor for that filter. 
and you you use just the, some equations, and the, or the location of the points always will be the fixed. But in the answer that comes from, as I said, we have this scaling factor, and this is somehow a, a tuning parameter which you need to tune if you want to implement the Kalman filter. And this is one of the, the things that you need to think about if you want to implement the answer to Kalman filter and find the optimal or the best value for this scaling factor. Now, uh, I've I shown you the, the, the general overview of the answer to Kalman filter. I try to explain the equations in a way to be understandable, but I didn't go into the, all the details where the equation come from. You know, I, I, made, I, I wrote the simplified version of the uh, sigma points and the corresponding weight. There are some special cases, some other hyperparameters. I didn't want to go into detail. You can find them in my papers and my thesis, which I put in the description. Um, uh, that, <clears throat> and right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one example and see how useful the uh, unscented Kalman filter could be for a parameter estimation of a highly nonlinear system.